So today we are going to be looking at how to integrate the inverse tan of x times log x with respect to x, otherwise known as the integral of arc tan of x times log x with respect to x. Now, I was forwarded this from someone I knew who basically forwarded it along as a challenge to see if it could be done. And so it's something that we'll basically be taking a look at today. So if you don't know how to integrate this, then first off, we'll start off with a hint. You'll note that you're trying to integrate inverse tan of x and log of x. And these things, you know, have a little bit of think about it, but the hint's going to come very shortly. You're going to be integrating inverse tan of x and log x. And these are functions that at this point in time, you'll hopefully already know that if you have inverse tan of x by itself and log base e of x by itself, then you would need to integrate these using a technique known as biparts. Hopefully this is not something that is uh, foreign to you. So hopefully you know what that is, but in case you don't, just taking a quick look here, the integral by integration by parts is where you say the integral of u v dash with respect to x, where u and v are functions of x. You can use this technique to say it's equal u v minus the integral of u dash v with respect to x. And you basically just go, okay, it's the chain rule, but in reverse, uh, the product rule, but in reverse. And you basically just, you know, take a look at this and consider what's u and what's v dash and have a little bit of think about what you might do. All right, which one's u and which one's v dash. There's more than one option here. Now, I'm in a moment going to proceed, but you can give this a go yourself first. You might pause now. And so I'm going to proceed with letting u equals log base e of x. And of course, v dash would therefore be inverse tan of x. And we would then proceed with to write u dash equals one over x. And v would be the integral of inverse tan of x. And as we mentioned earlier, that in and of itself would need you to use by parts as well. Now, this is hopefully an integral that you are already comfortable and familiar with. Um, and you can give that a go. If you're not comfortable with it, um, you know, you might go, want to go and revise that, but we'll just quickly do it here. So integral of inverse tan of x, we're going to use by parts, and we're going to let v dash equal one. So that means v equals x, and then you'll get your inverse tan of x times dx dx with respect to x. You swap them around, get x times inverse tan of x minus the integral of x times the derivative of inverse tan of x. And you know, following that through, it should be pretty straightforward that the derivative of inverse tan of x is one over x squared, giving us this integral we need to integrate, which is the integral of x over one plus x squared, have a little think about how I might do that, but hopefully it's clear we use substitution where u equals one plus x squared. That means du equals two x dx. And as I don't have a lot of space here, you can just quickly see that you just fit in the half and the two. And that should quite quickly and straightforwardly give you the answer that we're looking for, which is 10 inverse x, 10 inverse of x minus half log base e of one plus x squared plus c, okay? You can try this the other way around with u equals, you know, inverse tan of x and v dash equals log x. That's very doable as well, okay? Either way, you're going to have to integrate one of them by parts. And if you go and try it the other way, at the end of the day, you'll find there's not a huge lot of difference by the time you get to the end. The question I was given was actually a definite integral from one to two. We're gonna treat it as an indefinite integral from now. And we'll sub in the numbers at the very end because after all, a definite integral is essentially the same as an indefinite integral, except that you use the fundamental theorem of calculus to sub in you know, f of b minus f of a. So we'll proceed on that basis for now. Okay, We'll integrate it indefinitely, and then we'll sub in the numbers at the very end. All right, so let's apply the biparts and basically use the biparts technique 
and we'll find out the integral of inverse tan of x times log x dx is therefore going to be, given the way we've broken it down, log of x times the integral of inverse tan of x, which we said is x times the inverse tan of x minus half log base e of x squared plus one. And then we'll need to subtract the integral and then we'll flip the two things around. So you'll get the derivative of log x, which is one of x. And once you get the one over x, then you'll need to multiply by again v, which we've already worked out to be x tan inverse of x minus a half log base e of x squared plus one. All right, and we'll take a quick look and hopefully you can see that what we've got at the start there without an equal sign, the bit in yellow, it's already done. We don't need to touch that. It's already complete and that's, I guess, the whole point of five parts. Part of it is done and hopefully the integral that's left is something that we know how to do and, you know, we'll take a more closer look at it. So let's sort of put it in blue, all right, and take a look at it in a little bit more detail. So it's just a bit of algebra work, right? We can expand it. So this integral is equivalent to the integral of inverse tan of x minus one over two x times log of x squared plus one dx. All we did here was just basically expand the brackets. And given that there's a minus sign, you can see that you can basically break this up as well. Just you know, integrals can be broken up across addition and subtraction signs. So this will be the integral of tan inverse of x dx minus a half integral of no, log. So it's minus a half log of x squared plus one over x dx. And basically we've got here simply by using integration by parts once, doing a bit of algebra work to expand. And then once we've expanded, we've now split across the algebra and, you know, we can basically do this. And you'll note, hopefully, that integral of tan inverse x dx is a standard integral that, in fact, we already showed you how to do on the earlier page. So expanding the blue, getting the yellow, we'll write it down again at the bottom and you've got log x, missing an x there, but you know, it's log base x times x tan inverse of x minus a half log x squared plus one minus inverse tan of x integral plus half because we're you know subtracting a negative so it's plus a half the integral of log x squared plus one over x dx. So at this point in time you'll note basically the first term's already done integral of inverse tan of x is very simple and we've already done that on the previous page. So really the only thing that we need to deal with is this last term here, this integral of log of x squared plus one over x. And so that's what we'll be examining going forward and let's box it in red, okay? So all the other stuff is done and we just need to be able to figure out how to deal with this last part in red. So let's treat that as a separate question. So taking a look here, we'll be looking at the integral of log base e of x squared plus one all over x dx. Now, I'll give you a little while to think about it, but you might wanna pause the video here if you wanna give it a go yourself. But think about how you might perhaps try to make this a little bit simpler. And we'll give you a hint very shortly. See, if you think about it, the log function itself is already not the easiest thing to integrate, right? 
the log function itself already involves integration by parts. And so you're taking the log of some other function, x squared plus one, which makes it even more complicated. So we really would want to simplify that function. And it'll be much easier if it was linear. And so we'll just use substitution. Well, that u equals, well, have a think about how we might let it equal, but you want to make it linear. Now, in my case here, I'm going to let u equals negative x squared just because you'll see why a bit later, but I'm going to choose to let u equals negative x squared here. And moving forward, we can then write out what du is, which is negative 2x dx. Now I can try to force in, you know, negative 2x dx into the du um, and then, you know, do substitution, but perhaps it might be easier to just rearrange to get dx's and then we'll do the cancellation out in a moment. So dx rearrange will be negative a half, one of x du, which lets us, you know, kind of directly put that in. So we'll note that the integral of log of x squared plus one of x dx is equal to the integral of log of x squared plus one. And then of course you've got a one of x. And then, you know, you've got a dx as well after that. So you think of it as like three separate things, if you like. So we've got log of x squared plus one times, oops, um, or you've got multiplied by one of x, and then you've got dx. And then, you know, this dx, you know, this, this x squared in the log of x squared plus one, right? That's clearly going to be negative u because of our choice of u here. And this dx, we've you know, already worked out what it is over there on the right. So that's just negative a half one of x du. And so we'll sub those in, things in for now. And we'll kind of be a bit lenient with ourselves. We're going to have you know, log of one minus u times negative a half one of x du being the dx. And you still have the one of x. And so we've got x and u's together, which we should try to avoid, but you know, let's give ourselves an extra line of working. So we've got negative a half times the integral of log of one minus u over x squared, because the two x's go together and we put the negative a half out the front and then du. And then, you know, we wanna get rid of the x squared, of course, which is pretty easy. The x squared is just, you know, negative u, right? So we'll just sub that back in. So it's negative a half times the integral of log of one minus u over negative u. So I'm gonna treat it as negative half times the integral of negative log one minus u over u du. I haven't canceled out the negatives, all right? And now we need to know how to sort of integrate this function here, all right? Which we sort of boxed in yellow. And this might also be where you might get a little bit stuck. And it is, there is a particular reason why I've sort of put it in this form with a negative inf inside and didn't cancel out the negatives. So you might want to sort of examine that and see if you know how to integrate that. And again, I'll give you a little while to think about that. And, you know, a hint will come sort of shortly. So think about if you know how to integrate that. And if you don't, we're gonna basically give you a hint and you might not know how to integrate this perhaps, but one thing you might wanna look up if you're not really clear or if you don't recognize this is you might wanna look up the dialogarithm function, all right? So that's a sort of hint. You can kind of go look that up, okay? But essentially, this question boxed in yellow is just a special integral. And it's going to give you the result, which is what's a dialogarithm. And so that's the sort of way we write it out. So it's negative half. That's just going to be, you know, li2, u. And, you know, being substitution, we're going to get rid of the u and sub it back into what it was originally. So u was negative x squared. So it's going to be negative half, you know, dialogarithm of negative x squared. And so this, of course, is the separate question that we've been sort of considering, right? Which, if you look on the previous page, is this sort of, you know, red section here. And since we've done that, and we know everything else, 
we've basically finished the problem. We just now need to put everything back in. So the integral of inverse tan of x log x dx is just going to equal, you know, the yellow part, the very first term that we didn't need to touch anymore, it's going to equal log x multiplied by this whole, you know, thing, which is v x times tan inverse of x minus half log x squared plus one, right? Of course, then you're going to be, you know, taking away the integral of inverse tan of x, which we've already worked on the first page. So it's minus x tan inverse of x. And then, you know, because you're taking away a negative a half, then it becomes plus half, right, of log of x squared plus one. And then we need to then basically plus half of that sort of red part that we need to work out. So we've got plus half times negative of half dial logarithm two, uh, dial logarithm of negative x squared plus c. And, you know, just writing out one line to sort of simplify it a little bit more, you're going to get you know, log base e of x times x tan inverse of x minus half log base e of x, x squared plus one minus x tan inverse of x plus half log base e of x squared plus one. And, you know, just expand the positive, you know, take collect like terms and expand the half and half. So it's negative half quarter, dial logarithm of negative x squared plus c. And this basically is the answer to your indefinite integral. Keep in mind, of course, that the original question was a definite integral from one to two. We basically just now need to basically just, you know, sub those numbers in to this function, evaluate it, and that would basically be your answer, okay? So predominantly, I'm going to basically more or less let you guys work through that. That's basically just subbing in and is not particularly difficult. But, you know, you might not know how to work it out um, and you might need a sort of, you know, computer to help evaluate the sort of dipole, um, dialogue rhythm. So if you want to use some sort of computer program or like, you know, Wolfram Alpha, for example, um, you would use the polylog function and the bracket two to say it's the di logarithm and then x, right? So, you know, polylog bracket two comma negative one close bracket would equal, you know, what we're saying, you know, evaluating this function at negative one, all right? So that's how you might sort of evaluate it if you wanted to use sort of software packages. And essentially this is the function. We're going to basically sub in two into this function, take away subbing one into this function. And that basically will be your answer. And I will we'll essentially let you work through that. Okay. But we'll write it out shortly. I'll you know, give you a little bit of time to work through that. It shouldn't be particularly difficult. You can sort of pause here if you want to give it a go yourself, but it is basically just you know, computation. And you might want to pause here. We'll write out a sort of algebraic form in a moment. And so you'll note that if you've gone through all that work and subbed in two and one, you'll find that you'll ultimately get this sort of form. It's going to look very messy. It's one over 48 bracket times 12, you know, bracket negative dial logarithm at evaluate at negative four minus log four times log five, otherwise known as log 20, all right? Plus, you know, log of 25 over four plus bracket log of 256 minus eight multiplied by inverse 10 of two, close bracket plus 12 pi minus pi squared Okay, and if you're sort of wondering where those come from, then of course they come from, you know, the inverse 10 and also in the evaluation of the dialogue rhythm. And so that's basically the sort of algebraic form. And if you want to sort of evaluate in sort of decimal form, then, then you can do so. And so in an approximate decimal form, it will be approximately equal to 0 0.39316. And, you know, obviously you can just keep evaluating this to the required level of 
um, accuracy, okay, and precision. So basically that's how you do the question, okay? And so here, that's the question done. Hopefully you've all found this sort of pretty helpful and, you know, good challenge question to do. So hopefully that solves the question. If you like it, just click the like button and you know subscribe and feel free to take a look at you know, anything else that sort of might interest you here while you're at it. And you know, if there's any good challenge questions, you know, then send them along.